All right, biologists, in every IGCSC biology exam, there will be a question asking you to design an experiment. And this is what we are going to learn today. First, we have to remember the main types of variables. We have your independent variable that is independent because you choose, right? This is what you choose. It doesn't depend on anything except for you. It is the cause, the consequence, the thing that happens because of the independent variable. That is the dependent variable. It happens because of the dependent, sorry, the independent. And the controlled variables are the ones that have to be kept the same so that the experiment is valid. For example, a student conducted an experiment to determine the effect of frequency of irrigation on the rate of growth of pea plants. So you have pea plants and you want to water these plants and you wonder if watering once a day or twice a day or three times a day, which is better for the plant growth. First question, what are the independent and dependent variable in this experiment? All right, so the frequency of irrigation is the independent variable. It's the thing you choose. You chose to water this plant once a day or two times a day or three times a day. And the rate of growth, the change in rate of growth, that is the thing that happens because of the frequency you chose. So that is the consequence. That is the dependent variable. What about the controls? Well, you have to keep everything else the same so that it, the experiment is valid, so that we know that the change in rate of growth is because of the change in the frequency of irrigation and not something else. So you have to use the same plant. You have to use uh, plants of the same age. You have to use the total volume of water. Think about that. If I water the plant every time with the same amount of water, if I give water for the plant, let's say once a day or five times a day, well, the plant that is watered five times will receive five times more water than the plant that is watered only once. So that might be the cause of the change of growth, of the change of rate of growth, not the frequency, but the total amount of water. So you have to keep that constant. So if I'm going to give the plant 100 milliliters of water per day, I can do that only once, or I can divide this 100 milliliters in five fractions and give the plant the same 100 milliliters, but spaced out throughout the day. So the QUARMS is an acronym to help you remember all the parts of your experiment design so you can score the six marks of this question. Every exam, this question will be there and it's worth five, as six marks. So the first thing you need is the change. The C in QUARMS means change. That is the thing you are going to change, the independent variable, which in our case is the frequency of irrigation. So you have to mention that. The organism, O for organism, the organism is P plants in all trials and repetitions. And then M and M here for quarms, that is measurement. What are you measuring? So you're going to measure the dependent variable. And we said that the dependent variable was the rate of growth. But how are you going to measure that? You have to be very specific. So for example, you can say, oh, repetitions. You have to mention repetitions. I'm sorry. You have to mention repetitions. IGCSE will not ask you for a precise number. Oh my God. If they don't repeat the experiment three times, if they said five times, it's wrong. No, that doesn't happen. As long as you mention you are going to repeat, so repeat three times, repeat five times, repeat 10 times, whatever is convenient, whatever is reasonable, but mention repetitions. You have to mention repetitions and then the measurements, how we are going to measure the dependent variable, how we are going to measure the rate of growth. Well, you're going to measure, for example, the difference in the plant height, you're going to measure the plant in the first day. And you're going to measure the plant in the last day. The measurement will be in centimeters. And then you are going to see the difference in the plant height from the first day to the last day of the experiment. The second measurement, not always, but almost always, is 
time. You have to be specific about the time. You have to state the time. Say for how long you're going to measure. You cannot say, oh, we're going to measure, uh, we're going to water the plant once a day or five times a day for a certain period of time. You have to say after some time you're going to measure, after some time is not good enough. After what time? Let's say one week. How do I know that one week is good enough? You don't. So maybe two weeks. If you are not sure, then increase the time. If, you, if you're thinking of a time span and you're not sure if that's good enough, say something, you know, a longer time span just to be safe. But you have to be specific. You have to say the time. And then the double S at the end of forms are two controlled variables, two things you have to keep the same. For example, the age of plants and total volume of water. You could have said the type of soil. You could have said um, other things. The mark scheme is very generous with the controls. And you're going to see that Quorms has seven letters, but the question has six marks. That's so you can have a little wiggle room. Let's see an example from a past paper. Design an investigation to determine whether drinking warm drinks increase the rate of sweat production. First thing. What are your variables? What are your dependent and independent? Well, what are you going to change? What is your choice? Well, drinking drink uh, warm drinks, that's my choice. I could give the person a warm drink or a cold drink. That's my choice. So that's the independent variable. So what happens because of the temperature of the drink? Well, you have the rate of sweat production. That is the dependent variable. You have to measure that in a specific way. These questions, they are specific. They ask you to write in full sentences. So you cannot just write the acronym and state what is your independent variable, what is your organism, the repetitions. You have to write a paragraph, but the acronym is important so you don't miss anything. So let's take a look here at the mark scheme. You need change. Drinks of different temperatures or a warm drink and a cold drink or something equivalent organism, the person, right? So people of the same age or mass or sex or fitness, body temperature is very important because, you know, the hotter, the more sweat the person is going to produce. Repeats. See how the Marx King doesn't even ask for a determined number of repetitions, but you have to state they're going to repeat with several people, several groups of people or something equivalent. And if you give them a number, that's even better. So for good practice, we're going to repeat the experiment five times. We're going to repeat the experiment three times for reliability. Then how are you going to measure the rate of sweat production? How are you going to measure? Well, we're going to measure the mass of sweat or the volume of sweat. You are never, ever going to say the word amount. Amount is not specific enough. How are we going to measure this amount? Are we talking about volume? Are we going to talk about mass? Even the area of sweat or the number of sweat drops? That is a valid way of counting sweat or measuring sweat. But amount is too generic. You have to be specific with your instructions. Do not say the word amount. Also, after how long you're going to see that? You're going to give the person a drink and immediately measure their sweat? Of course not. You got to give it some time. But you cannot say we're going to give it some time or after a while. You have to state the period of time. Say after five minutes, after one hour, after. You got to be specific. You got to say something. Again, the mark scheme here is not specific about how long it should be, but you have to state a period of time. And then the things to be kept the same. Same exercise, food, water, volume of drink. If the person who drank the hot drink, drink uh, let's say they drank a whole liter, well, that's different from drinking just 50 milliliters. So the volume of drink, the type of drink, the clothes, because if one person is wearing winter gear and the other person is wearing swimsuit, that's absolutely different, right? Material of the clothes, room temperature, air conditioning, room humidity, time of day, things that you have to keep the same in the environment. If you have six of those points in a paragraph, you could even write as a recipe. First you do this, then you do that. However, you have to use full sentences. You cannot just say, oh, 
people of same age. You got to write a full sentence. If you have six of those, then you have the full marks for this question that is guaranteed to show on your exam.